I'm John Garvin, and I'd like to welcome you to another episode in my series on oil painting. Today, I'm going to be doing something a little different than what I've done in the past. I'm going to be doing a super colorful flowerscape, um, and I've never tried anything like this before. So again, I always start with doing an underpainting on my, on my sheet of masonite. Um, this is, again, completely dry, and yeah, you can kind of see how much detail I've put into this. Sort of like my last uh, landscape, which was kind of more of a still life. Um, this is more of a floral arrangement. So I really wanted to get the placement and the shape of all these flowers figured out without worrying about the color. So that's one of the nice things about doing an underpainting is it kind of allows you to work out all your values and the placement and the composition and how much detail you're gonna put in without really worrying about the color yet so uh yeah so anyway i have uh, my photograph i've got my underpainting done and uh i've got my my palette ready which uh for the first time i'm going to be using a super wide range of colors because of all the colors that are that are in this really really colorful uh landscape so can't wait to get started So I'm starting out with cad yellow, ultramarine blue, and a bit of thalo blue, which is a little cooler. The first thing I want to do is just paint in the base layers of green. You can see how translucent this is, allowing the structure of the underpainting to show through. At this point, I'm not worried about highlights and shadows. Those will come later. Next, I add alizarin crimson and a little permanent rose and start working on the petunias in the foreground. At this stage, I'm trying to get just basic shading in, knowing I'm gonna have to come back later and do a bunch of detail work on these. Then I move on to the yellows, using cad yellow with just a touch of red for the centers of these white daisies. I also use cad yellow raw out of the tube to keep these distant yellow daisies as bright as possible. I know from the composition work I did on the photograph that the balance between these three major groups of flowers, the petunias, white daisies and yellow daisies is the key to this painting's success. So I want these yellow flowers to pop. Next, I want to work on the sky. So I mix a tiny bit of thalo blue with titanium white and just start layering it in. While there's a little more saturation toward the horizon, overall the sky is very simple, like on an overcast day. Again, I worked this out in the composition stage. I wanted there to be this stark contrast between the busy foreground and the simplicity of the sky. Using that same mixture, I go ahead and start painting in these distant white flowers. One of the things I love about this painting is the sense of perspective we get from seeing all these flowers get smaller and smaller as they recede into the distance. That and the way they're oriented on a horizontal plane because we're seeing them almost from the side really gives the landscape a sense of depth. Then I work on the background shrubs. Normally I would wait until the sky layer is completely dry before doing this kind of detail work. But in this case, I know I want the branches and leaves to sort of fade into the atmosphere. And working wet and wet is a good way to achieve that. While I leave the base layer of the underpainting almost intact, I add a little Payne's Gray so I can paint in some shadows, and a Lizard Crimson to add a hint of purple to the leaves. Painting detail on distant shrubs and trees like this is a skill that just takes practice. Sometimes I tend to add too much detail, making elements too distinct, but I know it's easy to come back later and soften things up with a glaze or two. One of the things I like about the source photo is how all of these shrubs have very different shapes and palettes. And I really like the wispy curves of this little green shrub. You can almost feel the wind bending these branches all in the same direction. Next, I move on to the larkspur. Note that I hadn't added any of these flower details into the underpainting for any of these shrubs. I knew it was going to be way easier and look better to paint the sky in first and add these small details over the top. While I'll have to come back later and refine them a little bit, these distant details are almost complete with just a few simple strokes. I use that same purple mixture for the smaller larkspur in the background. This is a good example of how the surrounding colors and values can really change our perception of color. 
This is the exact same light purple that I used on the Larkspur in the upper right, where they almost disappear against that bright sky. But down here in these shadow areas, they really pop out. Now that most of the painting surface is covered, I can go in and start adding detail. More distant flowers, highlights on the grass, highlights and shadows to the shrubs, and more detail to the foreground flowers. This is where I go in and really refine the edges and shapes of all these daisies. Then I come back to work on the petunias, refining their shape and structure, adding deeper shadow areas as well as better defined highlights. I can't seem to get the color exactly the way I want, but I'm gonna call this good and move on. Finally, now that all the flowers are mostly done, I can go in and start adding more shadows to the grass and leaves. I add a little Payne's Gray to my green mixture so it's really dark and start picking out areas here and there where I can let the painting almost go black. These little bits of shadow not only add depth to the foreground, but they really help the colors of the petunias and daisies stand out. Small shadows in the background add depth to these clumps of grass. The last thing I add, as always, is my signature. I painted it in extra small this time since there was almost no room for it and I didn't want to paint it on top of any of these foreground petunias. And with that, the painting is finished. So I think it turned out pretty good. I really like the way the shrubs sort of disappear into the sky and how the perspective on the flowers kind of draws you from the foreground into the midground and then into the background. The colors in the foreground didn't turn out exactly the way I wanted because getting that really vibrant pink color uh, was just so hard to do. So once this completely dries, I'll put a coat of varnish on it, maybe a couple of coats of varnish, and that will really help these colors pop. Again, I could noodle on this for weeks and weeks, but I'm gonna call this one done and move on to the next one. So that's it for this episode. If you liked it, please think about subscribing, hit that like button, please do leave a comment, and I'll see you next time on Oil Painting with John Garvin.